Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to our online service, December 6, 2020. I'm Pastor Caesar David, Minister of Union Park United Methodist Church in Des Moines, Iowa. And we're so glad that you've taken this time to be with us and worship together with us um, this morning. Um, as you can see, we have the Advent candles, we'll have the Advent readings, you can see a little decoration, and um, a, a little decoration, not much. The worship team has done a little decoration here that you can see on the screen. And I'm sure that you're missing being in church, being in this sanctuary, in this beautiful sanctuary, and uh, enjoying the fellowship of uh, people of God sitting together and worshiping the Lord together as a church family. But um, until that can happen, we have to stay safe and we have to stay away. And I know the spirit of isolation is hard for um, most of us, especially those of us who do not have a lot of opportunity to get out and see people. But we are praying for you, and we can uphold each other in thoughts and prayers and be assured of our prayers from the church. Uh, just be safe, and we're sure that this will soon be over, and we will once again be able to sit together in this beautiful sanctuary and worship the Lord together. We do have some decoration on the outside of the church, though, which is good, because this year we missed a lot many occasions that we have to connect with the neighboring community and tell the story of Jesus. But some men from the Hope class have taken it upon themselves to put up a nativity scene on the outside, on the front side of the church. And if you're passing by, you can see that. It's especially beautiful at night when it is lit up. Um, and that is a beautiful message that goes out from the church, a message of hope which we especially need and depend on during such crucial times. So I'm grateful to the men who put it together. It was hard work. Uh, grateful to Steve Weinheimer and Larry Bailey, Brad Barkley, and Rick Winterbottom and Scott Weinheimer. Thank you so much, guys. You've done an amazing job. I know it was hard work setting it up, but uh, you have done amazing, and I'm sure that the church, and in fact, the neighborhood um, owes you thanks and appreciation for what you've done. It's really a good centering point for us to realize that when we're stripped of everything, all the glitter and gram glamour, what we have left is uh, our faith. And that nativity scene there points to that faith that we hold and cherish and that sustains us. So thank you very much. Let's call ourselves to worship. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days, and we want to do it right, we want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the company that will come. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then the healing is to be found. We need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Good morning. Would you pray with me? Where there seems to be no way to end the conflict and violence in our time, we pray that you would teach us, O Christ, to prepare the way. Where we can see no way to provide for the needs of all people, we pray that you would show us, O Christ, how to prepare the way. Where we can find no way to work together for justice, we pray that you would change us, O Christ, until we prepare the way. Where we are unable to believe in a way to live simply, responsibly, and mindfully, we pray that you would inspire us, O Christ, to faith that prepares the way. In a world where we are tempted to see so many of our challenges as dead ends, 
We pray for a new vision, a new heart, and a new commitment to prepare the way for your reign, your grace, your salam, and for the liberation, justice, and peace that you bring. Amen. The following are announcements for the day. Pledge cards were mailed out last week for the church's 2021 general budget. Please have all pledge cards returned to the church by December 31. Thank you for your generosity and continued support. Last Monday, the Manna Meal team served 166 meals in addition to feeding the crew. There will be no Manna Meal served in December due to the high percentage of COVID cases in this area. The next scheduled Manna Meal is for January 25. Please follow us on Facebook for details. The Valcoma Nut Sale is still going. Uh, we have a few uh, nuts left in uh, inventory. If you will go to our website, you will see the inventory that we have left. Lisa will continue to work from home on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Although she cannot answer the church phone remotely, she does frequently check the voice messages and will call you back as soon as possible from her cell phone. But if you need an immediate answer, please do not hesitate to call her directly at area code 408-607-1468. If you have been uh, near the church the last week uh, driven by, you will notice that the nativity scene is back. It's on display in the front of the church. A big thank you goes out to some of the Hope Class men, Steve Weinheimer, Brad Barkley, Larry Bailey, Scott Weinheimer, and Rick Winterbottom. Let us look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, God of hope, you raised up John the baptizer as a herald who calls us to conversation. As we joyfully await the glorious coming of Christ, we pray to you for the needs of the church and the world. Bless our national leaders during this transition with wisdom and strength to prepare for the changes to come. Lord, you know our hearts. We miss being in church. We miss our in-person fellowship. Keep us strong in this season, in this time of isolation, knowing that your love binds our hearts together, even as we hold each other in thoughts and prayers. Lord, we thank you for these, our dear ones, who are celebrating birthdays this week. Chris Weinheimer, Virgil Hillman, Stephanie Wright, Ethan Colorado, and Elizabeth Colorado. Thank you for your protection, provision, guidance, and grace upon them. Please continue to be with them, lead, and use them according to your purpose. Bless them with many more occasions to celebrate your blessings in their lives. Lord, this time we also 
bring before you all our dear brothers and sisters who aren't keeping well, Lynn Ball, Bob Irvin, Cindy Brown, Reverend Bob and Linda Kelly, Linda Shriver, Jan Birkenbein, Elaine Burke, Don Burke, Daryl Bailey, Jaylene Bar Barton, David Binder, Robert Zast, Gladys Kohler, Trevor Negret, Elizabeth Gavin and her children, Lyman Michael, Anna Trejo, and baby boy Trejo. Bless their treatment and their medicines. Bless their caregivers. Bless their families and friends who go through this along with them. Please bless them with strength and healing. Bless them with peace and joy that only you can give during such difficult times. Please give them opportunities to testify to your touch in their lives. Lord, today we especially uphold Connie's family in prayer before you as Laurie Robinson mourns the loss of her mom, Connie. We pray for the entire family to be comforted and to be at peace knowing that their mother is with you. Bless the family with the assurance of your eternal presence and love. Please continue to bless us with knowing and understanding your words as we worship you. Teach us to translate your truths into our practical day-to-day -day living so that we may be found doing what you'd like us to do. Amen. The Old Testament scripture reading today is found in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judea, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arms rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The New Testament reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is risen in the prophet Isaiah, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with the water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In our scripture reading, we have these words, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. When we read that, we know that there is work to be done in preparation of the coming of Christ. And although Jesus was born and lived 
2000, more than 2,000 years ago, and we are commemorating that occasion, that event now, the preparation that is needed is still significant, and that preparation is still needed. Let's spend some time meditating on the preparation that John the Baptist is talking about here. And as we talk about this, it is one thing to realize that work needs to be done. It's quite another thing to realize that we are the ones that need to do that work. So as we approach this meditation, as we reflect on this passage, um, let's make it personal. Let's understand the kind of preparation that we are being asked to do. What is that preparation? When we think about Christmas and when we think about preparing for Christmas, there are so many things that come to mind. There are presents to be wrapped, there are parties to be planned, and there are dinners, there is decorating the house and hanging up the greens and so on. And all of that fun stuff is there. In fact, uh, sometimes we prepare so much in advance. If you take a look around the city and see the, the shelves in malls that are stocked up with Christmas things, some people have complained that we've had so much of those things and heard so much about it that by the time Christmas Day rolls around, you don't feel anything special about it. Maybe. Anyway, the preparation that we are being told about by John the Baptist and before that from the prophets is for us as forerunners of Christ to prepare the way in the sense of making the way free of impediments, making it smooth, and also to inaugurate his kingdom and God's reign here on earth. So let's focus on that for a bit as we talk about these two kinds of preparations that we're called to make as we move forward in this Advent season, seeking to celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ. The first is the preparation of our hearts. Now some of the biggest impediments to our witness, to growth, and to blessings in general is not in the path ahead of us, it is not in the circumstances that surround us, it is not even in the people around us. None of those things are obstructing or impeding our blessings. It is difficult for us sometimes, but it is uh, very important for us to realize that some of those impediments are not outside, but they're within ourselves. And therefore, John the Baptist is preaching a message of repentance as the beginning, as a starting point, as a first step for that preparation. He proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, which means that we have to be actively dealing with that sin in our lives. It is like a, 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 the, the cleaning that we do at Christmas, a cleaning of the heart in this case. And the kind of cleaning that we do when we're expecting company at home, it makes us happy. That cleaning makes us happy because we're excited about that company that we're expecting. And if we're happy this Christmas about Jesus, uh, the coming of Jesus, then we'll be happy to do all that cleaning in preparation to welcome Jesus in our hearts. We have to repent of our sins and feel the kind of remorse and sadness that uh, not only makes us feel guilty, but it prevents us and stops us from walking further away from God and instead makes us return and come back to his loving, waiting, forgiving arms. So that is the first thing, the preparation of our hearts. And the second is the preparation to inaugurate his kingdom. The kingdom of God is characterized by love and peace and truth and justice among other values and principles. And every opportunity that we have to show love, to build peace, to seek the truth, and to support justice is an opportunity in the direction of inaugurating and preparing the path of making the path smooth for consolidating the reign of Christ here on earth. One of the hardest things this year is, um, has been not being able to come together. And it's true for families, it's true for churches. We're not able to get together for in-person services. And we miss this time. Um, uh, there is usually in many churches the hanging of the greens, which is a great time, very significant time when we are kind of preparing and getting into the mood for celebrating 
Christmas. And um, some of us are not even in the mood to decorate our houses because some of us are saying, what's the use? We aren't visiting anyways. It's tough when we think about what we have gone through this year. We don't have all the things this year that makes this special season fun, Christmassy, warm, and nice. But think of it this way. What has happened with us is we are stripped of all that isn't really important after all. As we think of John the Baptist in the wilderness wearing nothing but clothes made of camel's hair and a, a leather belt around his waist and eating locusts and honey, talk of stripping down to bare essentials. And it seems like this year as we are being called to be the forerunners to prepare the way of the Lord, we are stripped too in quite another sense. We are stripped of our parties and our get-togethers and all that glitter and noise of Christmas that usually uh, the world defines as celebrating Christmas. And so we have this really great opportunity this year to be quiet, to retreat from this noise and glitter, to be by ourselves, to understand what the true significance of Christmas is. We are the forerunners of God's grace and love and forgiveness. So we are the ones that prepare the way uh, for God's kingdom. And the way to do that, the way we do that is by being the people of love, by being the people of truth and peace and justice. And we have these important gemstones, love and peace and truth and justice. And this year, as we have not been able to decorate our churches, we have not been able to decorate our homes maybe, um, let's think of another kind of decoration. Now that we are stripped to uh, the bare essentials and we are forced to think beyond the external glitter and noise, let's go deeper and understand that we can still decorate the world with God's goodness and grace and love. And it will dazzle with the glory of our King. Let's think about the opportunities we have for inaugurating the Kingdom of God. It all begins by looking inwardly in our hearts and seeing if there is some work to be done there, some preparation that we need to make in our hearts. So let's get started. Let's prepare to receive the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's prepare to be the forerunners to prepare the way for the Lord to inaugurate his kingdom of righteousness, his kingdom of love and peace and truth and justice. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come in your presence, Lord, we realize that there are so many things that we're not able to do that we did in the previous years. But thank you for this opportunity to be stripped to the bare essentials to understand what you really want us to do. And Lord, as we understand the true significance and the message of Christmas, and as we understand your expectation for us to be forerunners to prepare the way for you, we pray, Lord, that you would give us the eyes to see opportunities around us to do that. Give us the strength and the determination so that we may put ourselves as instruments in your hands so that your kingdom may come. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's all join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>